Okay. I'm Juan Aparicio from the University Miguel Hernández of Elche at the Center of Operations Research. Um, the title of uh, this paper is Efficiency Analysis Trees, a bridge between FDH and machine learning. Uh, well, this, uh, this paper uh, has also been written by the PhD student Miriam Esteve and my colleagues Alejandro Rabasa and Jesus Javier Rodriguez Sala. Well, introduction. Um, FDH, overfitting and machine learning techniques. Okay. Uh, well, uh, since the, the seminar papers by Kuhnmans, De Bru, uh, Sefar, and, and Farrell, um, a, large, a large amount of literature has been developed on, on how to estimate production frontiers and, and uh, how to measure uh, technical efficiency of production units. Uh, Farrell's approach can be categorized in the current area of non-parameter techniques, since it is not necessary to identify a priori the specific mathematical formulation of the production frontier to be estimated. Uh, this line of research was later taken up by, by Charles et al. and Banker et al., resulting, as you know, in the development of the data analysis, uh, that data development analysis approach, no? DA. Additionally, uh, the Prince et al. in 1984 introduced the alternative technique known as uh, uh, free disposability hull FDH, which relies only on free disposability in contrast to DA, which assumes uh, free disposability and convexity. The convexity assumption is widely used in economics, but it is not always valid. Hence, the FDH can yield a more general and flexible estimate than, than DA. Okay. Uh, regarding FDH, mm, this technique is particularly appealing since they do not rely on restrictive hypotheses on the data, data generating process. Uh, a feature shared with usual uh, machine learning techniques, which are clearly data-driven approaches. Moreover, this approach has once more attracted the interest of researchers in recent years. No? See, for example, uh, the papers by Tabacoli and Mustafa, Kirstens, uh, and from a more methodological point of view, the contributions of uh, uh, Casal et al. and Daraya Simar. However, by construction, the FDA technique suffers overfitting. Note in the, in, the, in the figure that the estimated frontier by the FDA fits like a glove to the data, data sample, satisfying additionally uh, free disposability, no? monotonicity in this case. No? Uh, overfitting is, is a consequence uh, of the action of minimal extrapolation in this case. Okay. Well, mm, the problem the problem of our fit, of our fitting is shared by other well-known data-driven approaches. In particular, techniques that belong to the machine learning field, like for example classification and regression trees, CART by Brayman, present problems of our, of our fitting when a deep tree is generated. This problem can be solved by pruning back the deep tree through, for example, a cross-validation process. The principle behind CAR is relatively simple. A, a, a given criterion is chosen to recursively generate binary partitions of the data, the so-called training sample, until no further meaningful division is possible, while stopping roll uh, holds. The, 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 the graphical result of this process is a tree. Uh, the split at any known non-terminal node is caused by a predictor variable, an input, an input in our contest, and a threshold for this variable. Uh, given all the possible ways to split uh, the data at a parent node, CAR builds regression trees by choosing the split that minimizes the sum of the mean square error of the two child nodes. 
It is worth mentioning that the car suffers overfitting at the first stage. The tree grown is usually too large and the yielded estimates are overly optimistic. For the deep tree, the predicta is too uh, dependent on the sample. To overcome this problem with a previously assuming any distribution and the statistical noise, Berryman proposed to prune the tree in an appropriate way, uh, uh, in this case by, by, by cross-validation. Uh, additionally, in, in low dimensions, it is possible uh, to draw the predictor through a step function as shown in the figure on the, on the, on the right, no? uh, uh, here. The predictor is constant, is constant, is constant uh, over its terminal node. Not also that the predictor generated by car does not envelop the data, but deals with the average, with the average, yeah, with the average of the response variable. And additionally, the predictor does not satisfy the property of free disposability, no? monotonicity in this case. No? This function is, is, is non monotone uh, 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 in this example. No? Uh, these facts uh, clearly contrast with the feature of the FDS predictor. Obviously, uh, CAR was not designed for, uh, uh, by Brayman for dealing with the estimation of production functions uh, in microeconomics. However, uh, note that both approaches, FDH and CAR, generate step functions as predictor. This is an important uh, uh, point. Okay, uh, well, in this paper, uh, we adapt the technique of progression trees based on CAR to estimate production frontiers satisfying the property of free disposability. Before we begin, let us mention some other related papers, uh, such as, such as uh, Simona Wilson, uh, who adapted the bootstrapping methodology uh, to the context of FDH and DA, of course, Kuzman and Johnson, uh, with the corrected concave non-parametric less squares, and other interesting alternative non-parametric techniques for estimating production frontiers, that apply, for example, uh, uh, kernel-based approaches and uh, ro local regression techniques. Uh, in this case, see, for example, uh, Du et al. and Palmer et al. Another line of related research is that associated with the recent following two contributions. The first one is the book titled uh, Data Science and Productivity Analytics, uh, edited by uh, Vincent Charles, Juan Aparicio, and Joe Zhu. Uh, the second one is this paper mm, mm, uh, that corresponds to, 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 to a contribution by Joe Zhu, uh, uh, who shows that uh, data development analysis, DA, should be viewed as a tool for uh, data oriented analytics in performance evaluation and benchmarking. Uh, the approach that uh, we introduce in this paper uh, uh, is in line with all these uh, contributions. Okay. Okay. Uh, methodological aspects. In this part of the presentation, we introduce a new technique based on the adaptation of CAR for the estimation of production frontiers, which will be called efficiency analysis trees, EAT. We will start with the single output production contest. Following Brayman, three key elements are necessary to determine a tree predictor. The first one, uh, uh, a rule for assigning an estimation of the response variable to every node t, yt. A way to select a split, a split at every intermediate, in, in, intermediate node. And third, a rule for determining when a node is terminal. Uh, what's more, uh, we need to add two additional elements in our production framework. Uh, yt should, should estimate the frontier instead of the mean of the res response variable. And finally, the satisfaction of free disposability. This point is probably the most difficult part uh, to be addressed, and, and we deal with it in this paper by proposing a way of adapting the estimation of the output in each node. Well, in our approach, uh, uh, a node is terminal when it satisfies a certain stable rule. Following Brayman, 
if the number of observation in an OT is less than or equal to five, then such node must be terminal. In fact, it's terminal in our case. Uh, additionally, in our approach, the way of selecting the next node to be split in the algorithm will be random. Uh, like in the standard card, in our algorithm, a parent node T is split into two child nodes, T, T left and T right. By selecting an input variable, xj, and a threshold for this variable, xj, that minimizes the sum of the mean square error of the two child nodes. The formula that appears on the right, uh, uh, yt, L and YTR are the estimations of the output for the data in node TL and node TR respectively. Uh, the data belonging to the left child node uh, is the data that satisfies con this condition, while the data that belongs to the right child node is the data that meets, meets the, uh, this uh, other condition. Okay? More definitions. Um, in the tree structure, it's, it's no T is defined by the fulfillment of a series of conditions in the input space. We, we, we have here uh, uh, an input space with two inputs, X1 and X2, okay? In this way, after executing a certain number of splits, there is a region in the input space with the shape of a segment, if we consider only one input, uh, a rectangle, if we consider uh, 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 two, two inputs, etc. This region is the support, the support of node T, which is characterized by two points, point AT and point BT. Okay. Additionally, the property of free disposability in the case of dealing with trees is related to a new definition of uh, Pareto dominance of nodes in this case. No? In the figure on the right, node Node T is dominated by node T prime because there's a point in the support of T prime such that Pareto dominates at least one point belonging to the support of node T. For example, point uh, AT prime dominates point BT because the input components of point A are less than the input components of point B. This definition of Pareto dominance will be key for the proof of satisfaction of predisposability in the case of the of the EAT uh, technique, the new technique, okay, the new approach. Um, well, in this way, we have all the necessary elements to define a tree grown by the efficiency analysis tree technique, except one, except one, how to update the estimation of the output variable at the child nodes of each parent node after splitting. Uh, here, uh, we present the suggested expression for that. Uh, in spoken terms, for node T left, the estimation of the output variable is the maximum between the maximum, the maximum observed in variable Y calculated over the data belonging to node T left. And the greatest the greatest estimation of a variable y at Pareto dominant nodes of TL. So the definition of Pareto dominance of nodes comes into play here in the paper. This can be set for the estimation of the output variable for the node T right. Okay. Well, the, the process of splitting nodes is repeated until a split is found such that every terminal node satisfies the separate rule. Uh, let capital K be the number of executed splits in the growing process that corresponds to this last, last split and, and let T capital K, also known as T max, be the final fully grown tree. In this way, our algorithm yields a, a size increasing sequence of trees from T0, they will know, to Tmax, the deepest tree. Uh, let us also introduce the predictor of the output variable from the information of uh, a general tree T as follows. No? Uh, for input profiles X, 
like that, uh, where x belongs to the support of a certain terminal node t of three uh, capital T, the function of the function uh, d of x returns the output estimation for node t. This is the value of the estimation for uh, profile x. Okay. In more detail, uh, let the figure on the left uh, be the, the tree uh, T4 after executing, of course, uh, four splits. The terminal nodes are uh, T3, T4, T5, T7, T8. Each of them has an estimation for the, for the output. Y, T3, Y, T4, Y, T5, etc. No? Additionally, this tree has a representation of the support of the terminal nodes in the in the in the input space. That representation corresponds to the figure on the on the right. Okay. Then, if we want to estimate the the, the output value for a profile X, uh, for example, point F, we need to know the support to which it belongs. And the associated terminal node, for example, uh, T4, for uh, estimating the, the, the output value for, for this uh, profile, input profile. In this way, uh, D uh, of X equals Y T4 uh, in, in, this, in this graphical uh, example. Okay. In particular, uh, let us now focus our attention uh, on the predictor associated with the deepest Tmax uh, tree, D Tmax. Uh, in this way, we get several results. Uh, uh, theorem one establishes that the predictor associated with Tmax is a monotone non-decreasing function for singular pole production processes. Free disposability is translated into this type of monotonicity. Therefore, we are able to prove that the output predictor linked to the efficiency analysis through its technique satisfy, satisfies free disposability. Additionally, proposition three shows the similarities between the standard FDA technique and the EAT technique when the deepest tree is grown. In particular, it is shown that uh, uh, EAT and FDA generate the same estimated frontier when considering only one input. We know, however, that this result is not true for more general scenarios, okay? Unfortunately, as we mentioned before, uh, FDH suffers the problem, the problem of overfitting. The, the same happens for, for the EAT technique when a deep tree is allowed to grow. So at this point, one could think that the introduction of a new approach uh, of, of this new approach was pointless, uh, except that it has allowed us to bridge two fields that have grown in parallel, no? in some sense, in the literature, uh, frontier analysis uh, and, and machine learning. However, it is not true. The new approach, which is based on CAR, may exploit certain techniques usually linked to CAR, such as pruning and cross validation to overcome overfitting. Uh, overall, we, we suggest to always apply EAT along with pruning and cross-validation to determine an estimation of production frontiers. To do that, the standard process carried out, carried out, carried out by CARB in relation, uh, 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 of course, for, for, for pruning, should be slightly adapted to the context of frontier analysis. Um, we don't have time uh, to explain this process in the detail here, but let us uh, highlight the, the main ideas, no? Well, uh, uh, first, uh, given a tree, uh, given a tree, pruning means that certain set of nodes uh, will be removed. This, this branch, for example. Uh, regarding cross validation, um, one round of cross validation involves involve partitioning a sample of data into complementary subsets 
performing the analysis on one subset called the Turing set and validating the analysis on the other subset called the validation set or testing set. No? Uh, to reduce variability, in most methods, multiple rounds of cross validation are performed using different partitions, and the validation results are combined over the rounds to give an estimate of the model's predictive performance. Well, additionally, by the way we update the output estimation in each node of the tree in our algorithm, it's subtree in the sequence uh, T0, Tmax also satisfy the property of monotonicity. So we will use the opposite sequence, Tmax, T0, as the sequence of subtrees for the pruning process. Uh, finally, uh, we will denote the, the tree resulting from the prune process as T star, T hmm? after. Okay, well, uh, in this slide, we saw a figure uh, of an example uh, with one input, one output, and 30 DMUs. The data was simulated from a theoretical production function, uh, the, the red last, last line. On the other hand, the, 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 green, the green line, the green line, uh, represents the FDH estimation of the production frontier, while the blue line, blue line, okay, uh, is associated with the predictor generated by the efficiency analysis trees technique. Uh, note that uh, for this example, by proposition three, the, the deep tree generated by EAT will coincide with FDH. However, after pruning by cross validation, we get a frontier that upper envelops the data, satisfy monotonicity, and is closer to the theoretical frontier than FDH. For example, here, 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 even here. Okay? This is a very interesting point. Well, now uh, we briefly saw the multi output extension of the previous algorithm. This is really a very uh, recent development of our technique. Uh, several attempts have been proposed for extending single response decision trees techniques to the multiple response contests. Among them, DEATH 2002 seems to be the natural extension of the uh, univariate card. Uh, this approach works by following the same step as card. Uh, however, in the uh, multi output framework, the terminal nodes of the tree have an estimation for each output variable of the problem. Uh, we follow these same ideas in our contest of production frontiers, but, but researching to the updating process for each output that we suggested for the single output framework. Uh, like in the single output case, the splitting process is repeated until the D3 Tmax is obtained. From Tmax, we can define a predictor of the output vector, uh, dt max, and additionally, an, an estimated production possibility set, psi t max. Uh, psi t max contains the input output, the input output vectors, such that given a non-negative input vector e x, the output vector is Pareto dominated by the output vector estimated by the EAT algorithm for the input vector X. Okay. Mm. Then mm, we can prove that this set satisfy uh, psi T max uh, satisfies the property of free disposability. Uh, additionally, after pruning T max, we get the, the sub three T star. Uh, from this final tree, we again define a predictor, the T star, and an associated production possibility set, psi T star, which also satisfies free disposability. Uh, this is really our proposal as, as uh, 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 psi T star, uh, as estimation of the, of the underlying uh, terminology. Uh, moreover, a fact, a fact, uh, very interesting is that the standard FDA uh, uh, proposition, proposition six 
the standard FDH uh, uh, generated from a certain set of virtual imputable points coincides with the estimation of uh, uh, the uh, uh, coincides with uh, uh, psi t star. For de determining this special set of points, uh, we have to consider its terminal node, the shadow boxes here, the, term the terminal nodes, its terminal node in T star. For each input output point, uh, for each input output point, the input side corresponds to the point 80, which is the, the bottom corner of the support linked to node, terminal node T, for example, this terminal node. While the output side, the output side, corresponds to the output estimation of the EAT for the input vector AT. Well, overall, uh, this means that the set psi T star can be recovered from a special FDA technology. And indeed, this is key for knowing how to determine any technical efficiency measure by multi-output efficiency analysis traits. In this way, the output-oriented radial measure, for example, which coincides with the inverse of the several output distance function, should be calculated through the following mixed integral lin linear program, which has similarities with the standard with the standard uh, uh, FDH. In fact, note that in the left-hand side of the constraints, uh, we do not we do not have the observations but the special set of virtual points, okay? Okay, uh, a summary of main results in a Monte Carlo simulations. In Monte Carlo simulations. Um, well, in this slide, we present the results associated with a simulation for one output and several inputs, one, two, three, and nine. Uh, the physics analysis trees technique outperforms FDH okay, for all the computational experiences carried out. In particular, the improvements range from uh, 13% to 70% for the mean square error and from 10% to 49% in the case of the bias. A certain trend is observed in the results. In particular, the bigger the sample size is, the greater the improvement. Uh, additionally, the scenario with nine inputs is the one with the biggest uh, differences between the two approaches considered uh, uh, well, in this paper, in this analysis. Finally, a measure of discrepancy between the deep EAT, that is to say the EAT with a pruning, and the FDH was also uh, calculated. See the last column uh, uh, in this table. Uh, it shows that it is zero in the context of considering only one input, scenario one, uh, something that was expected following proposition three. Uh, it is, this measure is relatively low in the case of scenario two, uh, based on two inputs, and is higher in the case of third and fourth scenarios, scenarios with more inputs. In all the cases, the discrepancy observed increases and the sample size augments. Okay. Mm, we also simulated a multi output scenario with two inputs and two outputs. Two inputs and two outputs. Uh, the next two tables, this table and this table, uh, so uh, the next two tables show the results associated with this scenario. The structure of these tables is similar to the previous table, except for the fact that we now consider the percentage of DMUs on the two frontier and the possibility of random noise. Again, we observe that the EAT technique, the new, the new approach, outperforms FDH uh, with respect to uh, the mean square error and the, and the bias, okay? Okay. Uh, with a random noise and with random noise. Okay. Another 
feature uh, of the EAT technique is that the estimated frontier can be mm, graphically illustrated in an easy way, taking advantage of its tree structure. This is important from a data visualization point of view, and this characteristic contrast to the limitation of the FDA and even the data melanoma analysis in more than two or three dimensions. Uh, for example, as the figure shows the final tree obtained uh, after executing the algorithm corresponding to the EAT technique for one of the trials associated with uh, scenario three, where three inputs are consumed for producing one output. At the bottom of the tree, uh, uh, there are the terminal nodes uh, with, the, with the final estimation of the response variable, the output. Uh, in this manner, we can visualize the stepwise frontier by uh, uh, visiting the different, different branches of the tree, different branches of the tree, from uh, Tom, from top to bottom. Okay. Uh, finally, mm, we focus focus our attention on the curse of dimensionality. In the case of technical efficiency measures, this problem is linked to the to the lack of discrimination between efficient and inefficient deviations. It is a, um, a drawback usually related to the use of too many inputs and outputs in comparison with the sample size of the problem. We need so how the EAT algorithm works when it is applied to a real data set of uh, 15 uh, DMUs using uh, six inputs uh, to produce six outputs, okay? Although we, we are aware that this is an issue that made it further research, okay? Uh, to that, we refer to the data set of Fortune Magazine's US 15 best cities in 1996. Uh, see the paper uh, by Charles et al, 2019. In this example, the, 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 the FDA uh, techniques shows so uh, all DMUs as technically efficient. The, the score is score score e equals one. No? Whereas the, the the new approach, the EAT approach, may determine a score that helps to discriminate between the efficient and inefficient cities. No, uh, only in fact only only five out of uh, fifth, the fifteen uh, units are. Technically, technically efficient. Okay. Okay. And finally, conclusions and future work. Well, in this paper, a bridge between frontier analysis and machine learning has been built, introducing efficiency analysis trees (EAT). In some sense, EAT could be interpreted as prune. FDH, a prune FDH, or uh, FDH type out of sample predictor, overcoming the well known problem of uh, data overfitting. A Monte Carlo simulation showed that EAT outperforms uh, the FDH. Uh, additionally, EAT has several extra advantages. For example, EAT permits the graphical representation of the estimated production frontier through trees even in the case of dealing with a high number of inputs and outputs. However, it is worth mentioning that a drawback of the new approach is in comparison with the FDA technique is the computing time spent. Uh, uh, in this paper, the experiments were conducted on a PC with uh, 2.6 uh, gigahertz uh, dual core uh, intercore uh, i5 processor with eight gigabytes of RAM. Uh, our algorithm was implemented in a Python code and CPLEX was used as the kernel for solving the optimization, the optimization problems. Uh, regarding the execution, execution time for an instance consisting in two outputs, two inputs and uh, 200 uh, DMUs, uh, the FDA technique used approximately uh, 20 seconds. Uh, for getting all the efficiency scores, while the EAT 
technique, you to use uh, approximately uh, 85 uh, seconds, uh, four times more. Uh, this is a problem, of course. <laughs> Finally, we finish by mentioning uh, several lines that pose interesting avenues for further research. The first one is the possibility of extending uh, the EAT technique in such a way that the splits yield more than two child nodes in each iteration of the two grown growth uh, algorithm. Other lines of research are related to solving some weaknesses of the technique. In particular, the standard car presents a series of well-known disadvantages that are probably inherited by the new AAT approach, of course. Yeah. The first one is instability. Uh, decision trees are stable due to their oversensitivity to a training set, uh, relevant predictors and, and, and even noise. Uh, the second, the second drawback is um, the the, uh, the fermentation problem. Uh, uh, its leaf node can be made up of a relatively small number of observations, no? and consequently, its prediction confidence is, is limited. And finally, uh, decision trees tend to perf to perform well if a few uh, highly relevant predictors exist. Performing less well if many complex iterations and, and these variables are present. Uh, most of these drawbacks of the single um, single decision decision trees may be mitigated by growing a random forest of trees. Nowadays, random forest by Man, uh, by Bremen 2001 is one of the most applied applied extension of car in practice, since it allows to deal with the notion of robustness regarding the predictor variables considered on the observed uh, dataset. In this sense, extending the new approach, EAT, for dealing with random forests, seems a natural future research line. You know? a, third, a third evident research line to be followed is the application of the new approach to real databases in different empirical contexts, uh, banking, uh, sports, etc. This checking the validity of the technique in practice. Uh, other uh, research lines uh, could be analyzing in detail the multi output framework, considering, of course, more outputs and inputs, and the case of dimensionality, of course. Okay, thanks for, thanks for your attention. <laughs>